Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Matt Break Studio. I'm your host, Steve Martin from Ripple Training, and we're here with Mark Spencer, and he's going to show us, well, a continuation of what you started in the last episode, which is uh, setting up a 3D scene, uh, adding a camera, and now we're going to look at animating the camera. Is that correct? Well, we're going to look at ways to use the camera to move around the scene. I see. We'll, we'll see how, I how jumped, far I we get. I went too far with that. I like, oh, we're going to do all of that in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, we're using footage and clips from a tutorial that you've released. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Mastering the Camera in Motion 5 uh, tutorial that uses some projects from MotionVFX.com. We've got some beautiful projects with the tutorial, and we're just looking at some pieces of that, now, of I wanted, that training. I wanted to ask you something about the camera. It seems like... A lot of people can get by using motion without having to add a camera or do anything. From your perspective, what's the real advantage of actually putting a camera and then using the camera? What does that do to your animations? It, it, it just creates a whole other level of dynamics in your motion graphics. It creates motion. It creates in, it invites interest. When you've got a camera that can fly from one thing to another to another, I mean, you look at any motion graphics on TV or the web, and they usually involve some kind of animation where you could actually move objects in and out, but to be able to have a camera to move it wherever you want in Well, space just watch just movies. Great. The difference between watching movies in the 20s where they set the camera on the tripod versus, you know, now with the, you know, dollies and steady right. cams, moving the cameras up as actually participant right. in the scene. And uh, that's really what you're talking uh, about. Exactly. And with Motion's camera, there's so many great behaviors to animate it to act like a real camera where you can have it make do things that a real camera does. Right, right. So, but what I want to do here is, uh, in the last episode, we took an existing set or existing this one image in this frame here and we made some copies and spread them out in 3D space. If I go to the top view using the compass, we can see our three different sets here that we spread out. If I hit control P, which is the shortcut for the perspective view, and it's a handy shortcut. Three, yeah, control P is, is great. And by the way, just up here uh, in the camera menu, control mm -hmm. P, yep. we can see those three sets. And I'm going to go back to the active camera menu here. Now, what I want to do is I want to I duplicated these, right? Sure, so got they have the, the same exact image. same shot. It's like yeah. you know, we're not going to see San Francisco over and over and Unless over. Unless you again. really like San Francisco, yeah. which I do. But, I do. But I want to be able to get around a little bit. So <laughs> my question is, I want to go look at this other one to change the content. It's, so I could kind of move the camera around. I'm going to use these controls here and try to dolly in closer. And if you have 20 sets, oh my gosh, it's a lot right. of dollying and, it's and dollying. It's a lot of working like... around to try to, and so, and by the way, notice that right now by these 3D view tools, we've got a picture of a camera. It wasn't oh. there in the last episode. That's because I'm in the active camera view. You're actually moving the camera. I actually move the camera. Oh no. Right? Yeah, but oh, the DP, you'd be fired. Yeah. <laughs> All this, you'd be fired. You touched my camera? Right. It was perfectly <laughs> oh, set. It was perfectly set. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the thing. Yeah. Because we built this set with the camera at zero, 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 it's really easy. And I think of this as the, um, the Dorothy solution. Okay? So what you do, instead of clicking your magic ruby red slippers, you just double click on one of these three, 3D view tools. It doesn't and you get to go one. home. Yeah, double click, nice. and it brings the camera right back home. So if we go back to the top view. You will work in this town again. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, it's like, look, okay. I, put it, I put it right back where it belongs. Got so you can it. see the camera's right in the center of the 3D world. So control A for active camera. So there's a better way to move around in 3D space to work on your so sets. So I just want to interject something. If someone sees that camera up there in those uh, dolly, what did you call it last time, pod uh, position? Pan, uh, orbit, and dolly. Pan, orbit, and dolly. If they yeah. see that, basically that's a warning. You're about to yes. actually move the camera. Yeah, right here, if that camera shows up and you use these tools, you're moving the camera. Okay, that, that's a huge yeah. thing to know. I think Especially really Especially once important. it's animated. Oh. Once it's animated. Then you're going to be tweaking with the animation. Right, right. Got it, got it. So here's what we want to do. I'm going to select set two in the layers list. That's this guy over here. Then from the camera menu, we've got a couple of really powerful commands. One's called fit objects into view, and one's called frame object. And I like to use these together, okay? Now let's remember the keyboard shortcuts because they're a little faster to use them. So we've got shift command F, and let's choose this. And it'll be F for the other one, but shift command F, frame object. So I'll choose that, and the camera flies over and perfectly frames that object. So let, let's do it with So you don't uh, have to do your pod, your No, so I, I can select sec three, shift command F. It oh, flies nice. right over there. All right, let's go back. Shift Command F for set two. And now I can just drag a new image into drop this drop well. zone. That's huge. And replace that content, right? Of course, it's not San Francisco anymore, so I could go into my, uh, to my frame and into Love my text, text. Uh, layer, select the text, and New York. Uh, actually, isn't that Las Vegas? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the real deal here. Okay, these are iStock photo right. images. Um, so super easy. So then you can just again jump over, Shift Command F to jump over. I'll set, set three, Shift Command F. Wow, over look at there. That. And I can drop in, Rome. Let's say Rome. Okay, nice. I won't type Rome, but you Got get the basic idea. So real easy to move around. Now, Shift Command F was one command. The other one is is F, which is fit objects into view, which is a little bit different. I'm gonna hit F, and it, see it kind of move everything. Backs up a little yeah. bit. So what it did? If oh, you it's, barely, it's framing those graphics yeah, it's underneath. The, it's the bounding box. See ah, this bounding box is a very faint line around this whole set. And it's framing it. In fact, if we go to a perspective view now and select the camera, let me move things over so we can see. Uh, we can see how the camera is uh, now framing this. It's a little hard to tell now because the box that frame set three, there's that box. Oh, I see it. That's what it's actually framing right yeah, there. Yeah, that's what it's framing, that box, so that we can exactly see it. Um, with the frame objects command, it's actually trying to frame kind of the, the center of that box rather than the outer bounding box piece of it. So control A back to the active camera. And then if we want to bring the camera back home. Uh, double click. Yep, the ruby red slippers, double click, and we're right back to where we started. That's, that's so, really So a nice e way to, to jump around. One other way I just want to point out, if you want to, to look at something in your 3D scene and maybe you don't want to jump the camera over mm -hmm. there, and maybe you want to look at it in isolation. So for instance, in set three, I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to open up, let's say this hexagon group, and there's this replicator. And if I just want to look at that thing, there is a little, little tiny button right there. Is when it you called the isolate layer. button? <laughs> you, not... <laughs> you've, you've seen this training. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is called the isolate button. And if I click it, what it'll let me do is look at that item in isolation, okay, without any, and it looks a little funky because it's, it's animated. You can see it kind of animates here. But if you need to get in there and change the gradient that's filling that. Uh... Yeah, if I want to work on that, and I don't want to see it in context of anything else. I don't want to move the camera. Isolating is a great way to just to grab something and take a look at it. Now click, you can also do it under the object menu. There's an isolate menu item there, or control, control I. I. Yeah, to grab that. So just a couple ways to, to move around in 3D space. And just as a little hint, you know, um, when you frame an object with a frame object command, if you had recording turned on, I'll turn on recording right here. And my, I've moved my playhead forward in time. Let's just move it to about a second. I'll select set three, and I'll hit, actually let's select it from the menu so you can see frame objects, frame object. So the camera flew over there, right? And it recorded the well, move. Well, I had recording turned on, so you can see in the uh, timing pane now, we have keyframes. Oh, that's In right. fact, if you don't see them in your own project, you want to click this little button here that'll show the keyframes. Okay, there they are. So if I zoom back out and play now, we've actually got an animation flying over to that. And I'm going to move those because it happens before those things animate on the screen. So now we've got that little animation that flies over, OK? Slick. So one way to create animation. But actually, I don't recommend doing it this way. Okay. Really? Well, Why'd you just waste our time? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just tell you what's possible. Yeah, yeah, and, and sometimes it's useful for a quick move. But the thing is, anytime you do animation in motion, there's a question you need to ask yourself. Um. Can I hire someone else? <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, the question is, do I use keyframes or behaviors? Right. Because anything that you animate in motion, whether it's the position of something or the blur of something, or even time, you know, you can animate time, right? right. You can retime stuff. Or cameras, you can animate with keyframes or behaviors. And I'll just point them out. We don't have time to do them right now. But in the library, under behaviors, and under the camera folder, look at that we dedicated have, camera animation behaviors. Yes, behaviors specifically designed for animating the camera. You're not restricted to these. You can use a bunch of these other. You can use parameter behaviors. And you, you can, can combine them. them. You can mix and match. Yeah, they're great. And the, the the granddaddy. These are all great. But this guy, the framing behavior, is like the bomb. Yeah. I mean, you can do so much camera animation so easily. And if you've never done 3D before, and you know, it's kind of intimidated because it's like, where am it's I? Like, and yeah. This will make it so easy because all you do is just tell the camera where to go and it goes there. No keyframes, nothing. It just does it. And then you can tweak. You have full control over how it gets there and uh, where it lands. That's right. Any director on set would love a camera framing behavior. Yes. Just, that's excellent. So we're working with uh, some of the media from Mark's latest tutorial on um, mastering the camera in motion. And if you really want to learn all of these techniques for moving and animating the camera, I'd suggest you purchase that tutorial because it's, it's really one of his best. Um, anyway, you'll have to check it out. Mark, thanks for joining us again, showing us your 
cool sure. stuff. And uh, we thank you again for watching MacBreak Studio.